Okay, so we're going to jump in here to Parsha's Vayera, and by, by my own personal small way of introduction, I was once having a conversation with a Catholic friend of mine. You know this guy, uh, Chaim Baruch, you know this guy, Robbie, Robert George, Robert P. George? So there's a guy, he's a big professor at Princeton University. He is the head of the James Madison Institute. And he writes for the Wall Street Journal. He's considered to be one of the foremost Catholic thinkers uh, of the generation. And he writes a lot, he's highly respected. And he's a conservative, he's not crazy, he's a wonderful guy. I, I joke with him that he's the Haredi of Princeton University because Princeton is very liberal and he's conservative, but he's like the only one there. He's like a minority within a minority within a minority. Uh, so we have a we have a friendship. He actually came to Lakewood once and uh, toured the yeshiva, and he was absolutely blown away. So we're having conversation about an Arif. So some secular Jews, they say, ah, oh, look at the Orthodox. God made a rule. You're only allowed to carry. When they break it. You only like carrying, look at it, Jews figure out a way. You have to carry only in a walled place. And, and we figured out this the thing. Boxes, we call it a wall. And they, they, it became a whole thing from the secular. They call it with his rabbinic will, there's a halachic way. <laughs> you ever hear that line? Uh -huh. And conservative Jews actually use that to be mat their first microphone on Shabbos, then the community to drive on Shabbos, and then for the rabbis, you know, the whole kill Shabbos and all. And... They kind of found heterim, 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 under the guise of where there's a rabbinic world of the halachic way. And one of the things the Moschino do, they were talking about the Arab. So first of all, just to put Arab aside, the Amaratsis Shabbat is remarkable because Arab doesn't work for Daraisa. It right? doesn't work for Rosh Hashanah and Daraisa. So Arab only works where there's an Issa the Rabbana and the Carmelists. So Haim Osru, Haim Hitiru. The same rabbis who said oh, sorry, sorry, you can't right. carry in a Carmelist because you'll end up carrying which is a rabbin, they said, however, we'll let you carry under certain circumstances. So there's no rabbinic will halachic way. It's the opposite. What the Torah asked is Aser. What the Torah Matan is Mutter. The Torah said you're allowed to make you're allowed to make Mishmeris L Mishmarki, you're allowed to make Xeris. And they can make conditions on the Xeris. So they made a rule. You know what? If you have an Arab, if it meets this, this, and this criteria, we're going to give that halachic status. So the whole thing's like a joke, really, from, from their point of view. But I had this conversation with Robbie George. He says to me, you know, you Jew, you religious Jews, you in a nice way. He says, you're surrounded by mitzvahs. He said, for me, I'm Catholic. It's part of my identity. It's part of my core. But what does that mean? How do I practice my Catholicism? What does he do? You go to church there. Sunday. Yeah, okay. They pray a little bit. But that's it. They don't have mitzvahs. They don't have... So for them, it's an identity. It's an awareness. But we have what Chazal called chavilus chavilus. Bundles and bundles of mitzvahs. We have non-stop mitzvahs. We're surrounded by mitzvahs. I noticed that the, in the in the Vosses Nayas they had this article. So every time something happens in the world, let's say let's say a guy's in a car accident. So is the New York Times going to write he was a Protestant, he was a Catholic, he was a Methodist, he was a Muslim? No, it's not negated to the story. What's negated? What his religion is? If you meet a Protestant and he lives in Jackson and there was a guy in a car accident, a non-Jewish guy. Does he think what religion the guy was? No. What happens if he finds out the guy was a Protestant? Okay, the car accident, what's the difference? Person's a person. But you go, let's say a bus is nice. If something will happen that involves a Yid, we'll immediately bring out the fact that the guy's a Yid. We're like, we're the ones doing that. They're not doing that. We're doing that. I, I once had a discussion with the Asbury Park Press. There was a car accident in Clifton and... and uh, and uh, Courtney, by near base Vega, and a guy was killed in a car crash. And they wrote in the paper that he was Orthodox. So I called up the editor. I said, it's not relevant to the story. 
I said, if he would have been wearing dark, and it was a dark street at night, and you couldn't see him. So that was the cause of the accident. So you're right, yeah, you know, the accident. <coughs> Police identified the cause due to his garb. He's an Orthodox Jew, where's that garb? Levan Yishma Viro, Orthodox Jews, you should wear a reflector, whatever. It had nothing to do with that. The corner was well lit. They could see the guy. Somebody hit him and killed him. Nothing to do with the story. So why do you have to write that in the story? And I used to, I used to tell them that journalistically, you're singling us out if it involves a Jew when you wouldn't do it to any other religion. But that we, we're the worst offenders now. And then social media rose up, and anything that has to do with a yid, a little bit of a yid, whatever, they point out that he's a yid. So you take, for example, you take Lee Zeldin running for governor. Guy happens to be a yid. It's not why he ran for governor. The fact that he's a yid has very little to do with the fact. You know, maybe it was an inspiration to get involved, but Hochul was also not a yid, and she Hochul also ran for office. So no one spoke about Hochul's faith. There's, there's 50 governor races, not every year, but there's 50 governorships in the United States. You need to talk about what religion the guy is. We're, we, we emphasize it. We're the ones who jump on it. You know this guy Shapiro in, in Pennsylvania? Yeah, Josh Shapiro ran for office. He won. So he spoke about his Shemir Shabbos. He actually put it into his campaign ads. And he did it because his opponent... Not an anti-Semite, but a little bit of an edgy guy had run some ads knocking Shapiro's Jewishness, figuring he'll pick up a few votes from some people who don't like Jews. So Shapiro went with Afghi, he put in ads, you know, my faith is important to me, the Sabbath and, and all that. Very interesting thing. But that's our dynamic. So Robbie George tells me, he says, Rabbi, he says, you're surrounded by mitzvahs. Your mom is surrounded chavilus, chavilus, and mitzvahs, morning to night, yarmulke, tzitzis, tefillin, negelvasa. You know, the guy knows a lot, you know, negelvasa. You, 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 you wash your eyes, you make brachas. You go to the bathroom, you make a bracha. You wash your hands after you go to the bathroom. You're going to eat a piece of bread, you wash your hands again. You do berchaz amazin, you do, you do, you do mayim achreinim. You nonstop, you're davening three times a day. He says to me, so you surrounded yourself with a world of mitzvahs. Then he said to me something urgent. He says, so I get the error. He says, you're sanctifying, you're bringing the mitzvahs into the physical world also. He says, you have a sukkah on sukkahs. So in Shabbos, you have an error. You're bringing, that was his interpretation. Obviously, that's not why Chazal yeah. set it up. But that was his view. He said, you're bringing, you're bringing the Shabbos to the neighborhood. You're saying, this is a sacred space. Because this is a Shabbos space. I could carry in the Shabbos space. Okay. That's how he, he, yeah. he didn't know much. You know, he said, like, in a hall space, you can't carry. So you can't eat out of the sukkah. You're not out of the yeah. sukkah. Yeah, so there's a Sabbath space. You can yeah. eat in the Sabbath space. Cute. What do you say to that? It's a very, very, very cute spin. Yeah. Very cute spin. What do you say about that, Aaron? Listen, when in when in uh, Long Island, a few years ago, the the, the fry yidden were were called the, the, worst the media, ones. and said the Arab is is a sort is an eyesore to the community, and the and the and the and the, and the media looks up and says, "Can you show us exactly where the Arab right, is? Where is the Arab? <laughs> we don't see right. an Arab." <laughs> You know what the answer is? If you ever have to go to the bathroom and you can't go, you appreciate it right away. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we drive in the car, you say, it's like, it's nonstop. Yeah. So where, where does this come from? How how was it that we model a, a, uh, a religion, so to speak? We have a, we have a faith that's so modeled on, on this. So I want to contrast Parshas Lech Lecha and Parshas Vayera and make one, bring out one highlight of Vayera that's an exceptional highlight. So, I don't know if you listened last week by, uh, by Kriya Satayra or not, or the Yadonish, I won't hold you to it, but Parshas Lech Lecha, what is the main 
idea, the main content of Parshas Lech Lecha. You want to, you want to, try, to try to take a crack at it? It's a storyline, but what's the main... What's the main idea behind it? Avram, Avram recognizing and spreading the word that there's a God out there? Yes. And, and with that comes that Hashem chooses him. Yeah. So, Noach recognizes his Hashem, but he doesn't do anything about it. Adam lives in a world where there's no world yet. So Adam lives in a world that's not really developed yet. Noach lives in a, in a developed world. Noach doesn't spread the word of Hashem. Hashem saves him. But Hashem does not, doesn't choose Noach. So we get chosen for the grandest mission of all time. Greater than Elon Musk and Tesla. Greater than saving the planet. Greater than, than conquering disease. The Jews get chosen for the greatest mission in the history of mankind. And that is to bring the presence of Hashem into the world, to become the Am Hashem. That's what Hashem says. Lech lecha me'artzacha. Go out, I'll make you into a be'eschel, a guy gadol. I'll make you into a great nation. I'll make your name great. I'll bless those who bless you. And through you, all the families of the earth, that's how blessing will come to the world. And it's basically saying something very simple. Life can be very miserable if it doesn't have meaning. If it doesn't have Hashem in the world. It's short, it's bitter, it's painful, and it all ends up the same way. Six feet under. And along the way, there's a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. What makes life meaningful is purpose. The purpose of life is to develop a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, To develop a closeness to Hashem and to model ourselves on Hashem. So all bracha comes through the Jews. Any bracha that's out there in the world comes through Klal Yisrael representing that. And Parshas Lech Lecha follows that where Avram gets into uh, the war and uh, Light leaves him. So Light is sort of chosen with them. Light leaves him. Avram then gets into war with the four kings and the five kings. And and what's the end of the war? Malki Tzedek Melech Shalem I'm in Perik Yudalad Pasik Pasik Yud Ches Yud Tes Umalki Tzedek Melech Shalom Hoytzi Lechem Biyayim Uhu Kain Lekel El Yoy Malki Tzedek was the high priest to Hashem and Malki Tzedek blesses Avram and he says Blessed are you Avram to the high God the creator of heaven and earth and blessed is God who has delivered your your enemies into your hands because as Hashem said, I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you. But even like Meister Mikal, and he, he makes him, he essentially makes him, into Avraham Avinu becomes, the, in a sense, the moral and spiritual kain and high priest of the world. And then Hashem says, you're going to have children. It's not going to be Eliezer. And Hashem says, your children will be many like the earth. And then there's the Brisbane Absar. And the Brisbane of Sarm is where the choosing of Avraham gets locked in for all time, that it's irrevocable. And then Hashem says, even though you're going to go down to Mitzrayim and all these terrible things will happen, ultimately you're going to leave Mitzrayim because there is a pact between me and you, and it's an eternal pact, and you're the people of Hashem. And, uh, and then the Lech Lecha kind of finishes up on that very same note that uh, you deal with just like we dealt with light, now we deal with Yishmal. Yishmal's not the one. And Hashem says, I'm going to make a breast between you. Your name will not be Avram, but it'll be Avraham. And I'll, I'll make my breast with you. This is a second breast. This is a breast mila. And you shall circumcise yourself to distinguish yourself from the nations. And you're going to have a child, Yitzchak. And Yitzchak and you and your family will you'll be circumcised and you will represent Hashem in the world. That's the high level summary, a five minute summary of Parshas Lech Lecha. Vayera. So 
I challenge you, because you're smart, if you can give me a flavor for Parsha's Vayera that emerges from the very first Pesukim of Vayera. Before, before you do that, can I just add some, something quick? Of course. Something about meaning and, meaning and purpose. Yeah. So I don't mean to sound like ignorant, but like, are you telling me that an average, not an average, any person that isn't Jewish has no purpose of living because, or not purpose, that wasn't the right word for you, meaning, because he has, no, he has no purpose, he has nothing to, to, to serve. So you're telling me that every Jew, walk, non-Jew walking around is, is not, is, 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 is living a, a, a life of depression? Uh, I don't remember saying that. Did you say that? I didn't say that. I, I, I didn't say it either. What, what I, no, you're not. Just to be very precise, what I did say was that the meaning and purpose of life is in building a relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu and in living in a divine manner and having, becoming God-like, becoming Daimu HaKadosh Baruch Hu. As the Rambam says, Mahu Rach, Rach, Mahu Chana, Chana. The purpose of life is in spirituality, what people commonly call it, but it's in developing a relationship with the so I guess what, what, what Aaron, what you're asking is if a guy can accomplish that. Yeah, why not? Yeah, they so could too. Right. I'm yeah. asking if they don't have that meaning, so then... Then it ends up, they end up as miserable. All the relationships, because relationships, if you're not living in a godlike manner, it becomes self-centered and selfish, and then you don't have real good relationships. And you don't have a good life in this. Forget about Elam Hava. You don't have a good life in this world because there's no real meaning and there's no real purpose. The purpose of life becomes how much pleasure can I pull out of my daily life? And usually the answer is, is uh, get stoned and kill yourself because that's the maximum way of pleasure. You'll never have pain again. You know, like what, Life will be painful. You'll lose friends. You'll lose family. Life is painful, and there's no way around that. And if you actually, if you speak to most people, most people have a lot of pain in their lives from broken relationships, from insecurities, from things they've suffered, from abuse they've suffered. Most people have that in their lives. Uh, the The solution for that is to live in a godly manner. And if you live in a godly manner, it doesn't become about yourself. It doesn't become self-centered. It becomes about transcending yourself, transcending your own needs, and, and becoming a nicen, like a Kaddish Baruch Hu is a nicen, becoming a creator, like a Kaddish Baruch Hu is a creator. And that, that is what brings the pleasures, both in this world and ultimately in Eilam Habatu. So where does the Jew fit in? Because you're not crazy. The Jew's role is to bring that idea into the world. So we don't own it, but we bring it to the world. And that's what Hashem tells Abraham Avita. Through you all blessings will come. But it's actually for all the families of the earth we're all going to be blessed by, uh, by this. Okay, back to Vayera. I would, I would put out a little challenge. You've got to work a little bit. What is the theme of Vayera that you feel as you begin to read the Pesukim? Remember, the theme of Lech Lecha was we're chosen for a mission. Go ahead, let me hear it. Well, I think it looks like, looks like a nice story. It's a nice story, but there, is, there are central themes yeah. here. So I want to I try to get you to get beyond the immediate story and to try to get to the central theme.
a shot at it? Aaron, you want to take a shot at getting a flavor of this parsha? I'm trying to figure. I wasn't really. I, to be honest with you, I really didn't look. I, 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 I heard one, one. I did one piece of fire on this week's parsha. I'm really not holding so much in this week's parsha. So I would would be like would be like okay. You feel it's too soon for you? Yeah, I feel it's too soon. Okay. Yeah, I feel it's too soon. Okay. 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 It starts with Ephesus Arachim, and then it goes to Sedaim. I don't know the... I, don't I think know. you're getting too, a little bit too caught in the too immediate in, narrative. I, know. So, right, I want I to know. pull That's you back. Saying. I don't know. I want to pull you back a little bit. You're asking if you didn't have a chumash, and somebody said, "What does Parshas Vayera talk about?" Like, Bereshis is Bereshis is creating the world. What does Parshas Vayera talk about? Bereshis Bereshis creating the world. Noach is the world fails and it's saved. Right. Lech Lecha Avramavina gets chosen. Well, what is Vayera? is on there. Uh, so far, it's you and Aaron, and Aaron's checking oh, out. Aaron's busy raising money for the world, dealing with rabbis who don't like him. He's dealing with all types of garbage. Give me a flavor. I need some flavor from your time, bar. I don't want to just hand it to you. I'm saying... Uh, uh, it's Avram Avinu's uh, life life story. Life, so it's a life story. Yeah, his life Joe Schmo life story. What what's right. different about his life story than your life story? I mean, he walked with, with the presence of God. Intimacy, beautiful. Your I knew you'd get it. Okay, you got it. Okay. Avram Avinu has an intimacy with a Kaddish Baruch Hu okay, yeah. that is unimaginable. For the average human being. Right. So we spoke before about intimacy with mitzvahs. We'll come back to that. Not being surrounded with mitzvahs. But just, just elaborate on that. Give me what you're feeling from that. I mean, without looking at the Chumash. Yeah, like uh, every, everything he did was, 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 was with a Kaddish Baruch Hu, for a Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's a crazy intimacy. Yeah with Hashem, that this is not some abstract relationship with a divine, infinite being that we can't have a relationship with. Right. I mean, Christians, you know, they get pretty hung up on the cross and, and, and you know, Jesus hanging. Look how they have changed their perception of God from an in, infinite spiritual being into a guy who who got beaten up and got killed and he suffered for you and he was in pain and like uh, he, he took some patch for you and then he got hung and he did it for you for your sins and you have a religion and you believe in him and he's going to help you. Look how they try to make it local and intimate by trying to do that and avoid the Zara does that in other ways. They just have, you know, they have the physical statue and it's around them and they, and they worship it all here on Brahma, you know, just has a I don't want to call it a casual relationship with Hashem, but it's just so intimate. Hashem comes to visit him, Bikochilam. It's like a rabbi coming to the hospital to visit the sick, like Schleimingberg going to the hospital. It's it's intimate. And it's not just intimate where Hashem visits Avramavino at the start, but I mean, Hashem wants to do something. Hashem is mad at 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 Sadoim. Mad mad is a is a wrong way to say it. Hashem is upset at Sadaim and 
Hashem wants to punish the day. And Hashem says, Hamachasa ani me'avraham. Let me read you the Pasek. Hashem uh, ha'machasa ani me'avraham yud ches yud zayin. Look at this amazing Pasek. Can I conceal from, from Hashem, from Avraham Avinu, that which I'm doing? So, like, what, what does that mean, you know? What Pasek are we looking at? Yud ches yud zayin. So, I mean, Hashem doesn't know answers. Hashem doesn't know answers to human beings. Hashem doesn't owe me an answer. I want to do something. I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I have to find for you. You come home to your wife, and your wife says, where were you? And you say, I was here, I was there. She says, well, you told me you're going to be here at 6 o'clock and all that. And you have to answer. You say, you know, I thought I'd be here at 6, but I got delayed in the office. I was learning, I learned late, whatever's going on in your life. You, you have a relationship, you have to justify what you're doing in a relationship. So the thought that if Hashem wants to act in the world, that Hashem says, before I, God, acted my world that I created, can I hide from Him what I'm doing? And... It, it, it's his land. It's his world. I, I chose him to change the world. So, and Avram has a ferocious argument with Hakadosh Baruch Hu after that about trying to save the people of Sodom, and he wants to take a cry as he thinks he could change them. That's his mission. He knows how lousy the world is. He knows it's a terrible world. You know, he knows what the people of Sodom are doing. But says, Give me a chance. Let me work my magic on them. Let me do my thing. But look at the intimacy of him and Hashem having this argument, the bond that's really, really so unique. And then, uh, you know, he has the whole thing with the Malachim come to him, and and, uh, and then the Malachim actually destroys Sadaim, and and uh, and uh, they they go out, and Hashem Hashem wipes it out, and our problem gets up, and and uh, I'll carry the story of Lloyd's children. That's I don't want to call it a sidebar, but it's a piece of the story. And then Avram goes to Avimelech, Avimelech steals Sarah, which is a recap, really, of Sodom. It just shows you how bad the world was. And instead of Avram having to fight his own battles, which he did by the five kings and the four kings, Hashem says, I'm going to stand up for Avram Avinu. There's this intimate relationship. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm in his corner. Now, i got to make sure that what's supposed to happen happens. Hashem says to Abraham, to Avimela, you're going to die because you took Sari, man. She's a married woman. You're going to die. I'm going to kill you. And Avimelech is terrified and he goes and he apologizes and he makes a brisk with Avram. And, uh, and uh, then uh, Avram benches Avimelech and Avimelech. Um, uh, they had kids. So uh, Avram now is bringing bracha to the world. He's acting as Hashem's agent. He actually becomes Hashem's agent in the world. What was promised of an Ibrahim Bachal comes by Sadama becomes very real. It's manifested. And then Hashem gives Sarah a child. Sarah just have a child. There's an intimacy. Hashem's giving Sarah the child. And this goes on that uh, uh, they laugh, and then we have the incident with Yishmael, and who is who is the future of the Jewish people? Yishmael gets kicked out, and then it's Avram and Yitzchak, and the parsha kind of ends with uh, Avram has another altercation with with Avimelech. They make a bris, Beersheba, and then Hashem says, "If you really love me so much." I want you to give me your child, the ultimate sacrifice. If you truly believe in me, and you truly love me, you have to give me, and he, I, Hashem tests how far the bonds of loyalty go. And Avram is willing to go all the way, even to commit 
uh, human sacrifice to kill his child for the for the sake of for the sake of Hashem. I I I, I, I always had a problem. Not a problem. Just that you just don't understand it. Who's the one that gets to Well, I think the more fundamental question is, what is life? You know, what what is life? If if you recognize that life is a gift from Hashem, you only own the gift when He when He grants it to you. You're saying we we we're so poor, we think that it's all about us, and get yeah. more about us. We're 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 just we're we're just No. So, so th this is about a total intimacy with HaKadosh Baruch Hu that carries forth for all generations. It's not just for one generation. If you think of what follows on this, that it was followed by Yitzchak, Yaakov, the Jews in Mitzrayim, they carry that Keshe Hashem in the Midbar. And then even it follows into the time of the Nevi'im because the Nevi'im were very, Nevu was very common in Kali the rule was everybody, there were, there, were, there were tens and tens of thousands of Nevi'im. So Kaj and I had, I had this intimate relationship that kept generation after generation after generation. And then ultimately, it leads to uh, us today, where Hashem is really familiar to us. It's not some abstract God at all. Even though He's an infinite God, you can't see Him, you can't know Him. All the philosophical questions... Who is God? What is God? You can never really know Him. Even though you can never really know Him, we're still intimate with Him. And that, that's, that's how we represent Hashem in the world. Thoughts? As we wrap up, we're wrapping up, Shemar. Thoughts, comments? So back to the original statement you made of our tachlis is to bring God into the world. How do we, how do, we do that? Um, ultimately, it's by living living a godly life, because you can't you can't force change in other people. And this is how we represent them. We represent Hashem with uh, with with this remarkable intimacy and bond, and we wait for for uh, we wait for Hashem to do His part. It's a relationship. The whole job's not on us. Half the, half the job's on him, or it's not half and half, but it's a partnership. And part of the job is on Hashem, part of it is on us. Our job is to represent Hashem in the world, be the best representative possible. So it's not about living as an Orthodox Jew, it's about living a Kiddush Hashem. And, and uh, the Rambam has descriptions of it a lot, but uh, that's ultimately what it's about. Thoughts? Any comments or thoughts? Overall, it's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. That that's our life story. That's the story of the Jew.